some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome to hello. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we are doing a no run through review for Nidavellir and the expansion Thing Valir. Um, which uh, the reason why we're doing a, a discussion or a review instead of a run through, just because I can't think of a very good way of actually recording this game, um, and it's not the most exciting game in the world. But I will say, from my perspective, this is probably the best set collection game that I have played. Like, I I really, really like this game. And it fits the same vein of a filler, um, but also keeping it... It's like, because I think... I mean, it's not quite as short as most fillers. Yeah. Uh, I would call it more complex than a typical filler, but it's short enough that it kind of fits the category. Right, right. And, like, after, like, one playthrough, you're like, oh, I get it. Yep. Okay, I see how these work. The really, like, the rule book doesn't do this game any justice. I remember the first time we played it, we were like, how the hell do you play this game? <laughs> it has to be more complex than this. This rule book is all over the place. Uh, it's really the heroes, the amount of heroes that you have to be like, and they all do something different. So mm -hmm. these things do the same, but it's the heroes that really create a variety. So that's probably, yeah, you're right. It's not a filler. It's definitely not a gateway. But for me, it it scratches that itch because um, normal set collection games to me are very blah, mm -hmm. um, unless they're incorporated with other games. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, I very much like this one. So... Uh, let's start with just the base game, and then we can jump into the expansion. What do you guys think of the base game? I don't care who starts. Fine. Fine? If it's, it's, well, as always, it's more complex and more things to consider than is, is my liking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it certainly fits in that. I can see it as a really good middle ground or, or a simple version for more complex gamers taking a break between games. Yeah, yeah, um, that's true. In, in that sense of filler. Um... Yeah, which would be, by definition, really, of a filler. Yeah. It would be like, oh, I'm tired of playing Vito Lasarda games. Can I take a break? And then I jump to this one. Yeah, yeah, I can see that as, as, as a scratch on the edge. Um, but uh, simple enough to pick up. Probably a lot more simple than the rulebook, which I never read, and I picked it up well enough. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it really is a strange rulebook. I, th I wonder if there's, like, a language barrier that made it <laughs> complex. Because uh, who are the designers? Sergei Leggett. And, I mean, well, the, the helmet is Sergei Leggett, and the hammer is Jean-Claude uh, Van Damme. <laughs> Jean-Marie Minguez. Uh, I don't know what the hammer or the helmet mean, <laughs> but, but yeah, like, it's, I, I do think it's relatively straightforward, at least, because after a couple playthroughs and not having played it for a few months, I was able to come and be like, and just teach you. Yep. And being like, oh, let me just remember what these are called. And then, like, one or two kind of rule clarifications, and then it's like, oh, we're good. Yeah. Um, Zach, what do you think? I think it's good. I, I bought it because it's a lightweight game that I have most, I don't want to say heavier games, but midweight games. Mm -hmm. This is a light game that doesn't take a lot of teaching. Um, I've yet to play it at my house. But, <laughs> uh, doesn't take any teaching then. Yeah. <laughs> he, but, teach, he tells others what they could play. <laughs> this game's good. Anyway, let's play The Hunger again. <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 fine. It's 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 decent. Yeah. yeah. I think it's very strange because when this game came out, it was like I know the die well it's a dice tower, it got a seal of excellence, it's not like an essential I don't think, but they were raving it up and Z had that same concept of like this is a it's fine. Uh so I can see it kinda of being that way where it's like I don't hear anyone talking bad about the game, yeah. but yeah. I think they this game was so hyped up that you're expecting a lot more moving pieces when in reality it's you have five coins in your hand, play one down, take a card to a set. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. Like, we were talking about, oh, do you play for heroes or um, or do you just try and get the best set? Eh, eh whatever is available. It's pretty balanced uh, as far as, you know, obviously I've been focused on getting one or two factions mm -hmm. filled out and you're a lot more balanced. In this game, with the expansion, that definitely ha uh, became a lot more obvious. Right. Uh, or uh, optional, I guess yeah. is the, the word. Because um, the expansion, I'm, I'm thinking if you, if you... The base game, I could see kind of getting dull after a couple playthroughs. Because mm -hmm. there's not really a whole lot of options in terms of the end cards you're getting. Yeah. And then the heroes, while there's plenty, 
you're not going to ever get a bunch of them. Yeah. yeah. So you're really getting the ones that correspond to the strategy you've already started, and there's nothing you're going to pick that's going to really like jerk you in a different direction. Yeah. Right. For me, I guess the fine middle of the road, or you know, but not stellar, mm-hmm. comes from the idea that it is simple enough with a layer of complexity mm-hmm. that it hits a niche, but it's not long enough or involved enough or strategic enough for it to be in that higher level of games that people really rave about. Sure. And it's not simple and straightforward enough for people to play it once and instantly love it. Yeah. It's something yeah. you want to play through a few times and then go, yeah, okay, I'm getting it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's actually a very good point. Because um, you're right, in the, in the fillers that we've played that I've enjoyed, Canvas, Cascadia... Uh, 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 Calico, mm-hmm. um, hell, even Vivid Memories. Uh, those are like kind of like brain burning puzzle games, yeah. and and they're probably the same length as this game. Yeah. But I would say those are you're more like I guess like exhausted, like mentally exhausted by the end of it because you're like I just need this one p- pattern to go here, and oh there it is, thank God, and then now it comes all all together. Right. Here, yeah. I don't really think. A whole not, lot. There's not a focused goal to shoot for. There, yeah. There are a bunch of goals, and you just have to balance. Right. At any given moment. Yeah, I think you kind of pick, like, in in the games we played tonight, like, I would just pick, oh, I'm going to try this strategy this game. Right. And see if it uh, see if it pans out. Yeah. And uh, never once have I been like, oh, man, those are the nine cards that are out. Wow. Yeah. There's, just a, there's a lot of options. Because in reality, like you said... Yeah, there's going to be cards you specifically want, but maybe it's because I've only played this as a three-player game, but I've never been like so cutthroat, right. where it's like, I have to have this card, otherwise it ruins my whole plan. It's like, ah, I didn't get that orange I needed. Oh, well, I guess I'll get that purple that's left for me, because yeah. you only gain. Yeah. And maybe that's why people like it, because it's not, it's not that cutthroat. Yeah, and I admit, I, I disagree with you a little bit. I think that's the biggest fault in this game. Is that it's not cutthroat? It's... <sighs> and I see, I can see why someone is just like, well, who gives a fuck? Why? I'll just take whatever, you know? Yeah, it has a little bit of that Quacks uh, energy. It, it's not nearly as random as Quacks, but there are points where if you don't get rolling at the beginning. I mean, you saw how I played both games. Like, <laughs> you don't get started the right way at the beginning of the game. You're just stuck with, like, the last card every single round. Right. And you just get yourself into a bad position, which some of that could be mitigated by practicing the game. Some of that's just the randomness of the cards. Yeah, it's... It, yeah, it, you could... You, I mean, you can play this game very cut- cutthroat. There are yeah. times where, um, like, during the... Uh, Oh, what they, the, the phase between age one and age two, the distinction cards mm-hmm. like these, which I'm glad they exist. It's just kind of a nice goal. It gives you a little benefit, but none of them are really broken. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I don't think any of them really are. I think they're all kind of balanced. In but their if own somebody way. gets three of those and the other two players get yeah. one. Well, that's it, where it becomes cutthroat. That's but, where you lean towards like this game could get wildly unbalanced very quickly. That's true. Yeah, if someone's getting yeah, the the, the tiebreaker, the extra 5 coins and then the the 3 yeah. um it's I I I haven't played a game where someone got all 3. Um hell, in fact, I think in the games we played tonight, I think one person got two and then the rest were divvied out. Um but you're right. Uh but that's kind of I think where it gets cutthroat is you look at what your opponents need. Mm-hmm. And there was in the second game we played there was a time where it's like the the two mercenaries that I had, I chose to go last, and I saw, oh, okay, well, you put yours in blue. Okay, well, I wanted blue and red, but I can't get that, so I'll tie them on blue, and then I'll steal, and then I'll get the red one. Yeah. And so this game, I think, is polarizing that it can go both ways. It's like, ah, yeah. I see that Brett needs a fourth blue to get a hero. Mm-hmm. There's one blue there. I know for a fact. I, I mean, you could you could retain and be like, I know his highest coin value. Yeah. So. Maybe. Yeah, it's got mm-hmm. enough that you can play that way, and mm-hmm. that's the sort of games that I, I enjoy is when you can play offensive and defensive. Yeah. But again, there's enough complexity and there's enough variance mm-hmm. that I don't think you can do that very effectively. Yeah. Um, you can't truly hate draft unless you're willing to sink yourself. But that's the thing. I don't think you sink yourself in this one because you gain something. If you need a blue, yeah, um, yeah, I might not need a blue for a hero, but hey, that was 10 points. That mm-hmm. was 10 points for me, and you don't get 10 points. 
and you don't get a hero. But the difference True. between 10 points and like 15 points or 20 points could be game breaking at the end. That, of the yeah, game absolutely. Uh, it's unlike um, Petrichor, where yeah. everything was I don't gain anything, I just fuck everyone else over. Yeah. This one is because, yeah, it, any hero that anyone gets is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, I mean, I can't think of a single one where it's like, that one sucks. Uh, so it's like, yeah, you do hate draft to stop someone from really trying to get a hero, but you do only have so much control because the, uh, what's super random are the ends. It's like, if a, if a blue's going here, here, and here, chances are I'm not stopping you from getting one blue. Right. Unless I just get really lucky. But at that point, you're not gaining anything. Right. For me to be like, oh, to really stop Brett from getting a hero, I'm going to try and beat him out on every everything. Yeah, I mean, you can do it once or twice, but yeah. you can't do it throughout the whole game. Like, I realized at the end of Age 1 when I chose to make that one to tie you in this faction mm -hmm. so that neither of us got that benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do it for that reason. Mm -hmm. I did it for the points. Right. right, but it also blocked us, blocked you from gaining something. Mm -hmm. Right, and that was an added benefit. Yeah, but but it wasn't a strategy; it was a added bonus. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not super thrilled <laughs> about the the tiebreaker rules for the distinction cards. That mm -hmm. if you tie, no one gets it. I I do like the fact that the gems are a thing. Like it's mm -hmm. very simple as a tiebreaker; you don't have to do anything weird. And I like the fact that you trade. Yeah, unless you get, of course, the six. But then that means. If you keep losing out on ties, well, then chances you're not going to right. eventually. Yeah. Um, but I, I would much rather have the distinction cards be like, oh, okay, yeah, I have. Oh man, I have five. Oh, he just put five down. Okay, I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm gonna try and tie him so I can swap the gem so yeah. I can win this. That would add a little bit layer of strategy. And it does in the expansion. We'll get to that. Right. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, yeah, you are right. But other than that, then that would just kind of be annoying. That would slow this game down to a screeching halt if someone's sitting here trying to... Okay, what kind of coins does he have? I know he has a 19. Hmm, where's he going to put the 19? Like, that would just <laughs> yeah. be super annoying. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it is light enough that that, that could be done, warranted. but it really doesn't. If you're playing with someone like that, play a different game. <laughs> you're going <laughs> to lose because they're playing that way. <laughs> no, you're going to win because you didn't sit down for an hour and a half playing this game with someone like that. <laughs> Because that would draw this game out so long. Yes. Um, so really, in terms of like keeping coins mental, it's probably like I would only ever keep track of your highest. Be like, okay, yeah. I know you have a twenty-three. Where are you most likely to go? <laughs> and that's what I was doing in the expansion because I was worried that uh, someone was going to take this one that I desperately needed, and I was like, I was trying to win out on the first one so I can go to it and grab it. But then I'm like, then I lost it, <laughs> and I'm like, shit. Okay, no <laughs> one's going to steal it. No one's. And then you took me older, and I'm like. And I, I did that for my benefit. Wasn't even considering what would right. be a disservice to you. And it wasn't the best card for me, anyway. Right. Like, Mjolnir wasn't. Uh, so, so I, I think, yeah, this game could be more cutthroat. You could hate draft a little bit more, but it's not so much hate draft that it, like, Seven Wonders can have. Right. Because, um, to me, hate drafting is... Like, hate drafting is when you take you, you stop someone from getting something to no benefit of your own. Right. Like, you benefit because they don't get something. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure, I mean, I get people can view that as, oh, that's my gain from stopping you from gaining something. Uh, but for me, in this one, me stopping you from getting a red or, or any color, it's still good for you. It's still points, and it's still a path that you can now aim for to try and even out a set. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really the base game. Do you guys think any of the heroes are busted? These, these ones don't count. <laughs> They're the expansion. <laughs> I didn't really focus on the heroes much. When I, when I happened to get one, mm -hmm. uh, I just looked around real quickly and made a quick decision. I yeah. played enough to, to really understand how they all fit yeah. in. Most of them are straightforward. The colored, yeah. uh, ones for the actual sets, yeah. um, are pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's the neutral ones with the special abilities. Yeah. Uh, which even then... But, no, I, I think it's good. Yeah, I think they're just more powerful versions of what you can always get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most people might say the brothers, the five brothers, because they ramp up so quick, literally getting two jump, jumps you from 13 to 40 points. Yeah. Which is huge. Like, I got 81 points off them alone, mm -hmm. um, mainly because of the expansion allowing me to do that. But that's one of those things where 
Oh, you took a we brother? Can see you do it. Yeah, you took a brother? Okay, that's who we're taking. Yeah. Which is not great. I've never enjoyed games like where it's like, oh, you did something, now I have to play a complete, I have to play, you know, goalie. Yeah. You know, to, I don't want that brother, but to stop you from getting 20, 37 points, no, 27 points, mm -hmm. I guess I'll take one. <laughs> and then it becomes a wash. So, maybe the brothers I don't like so much, but every, everyone else, uh, I think is... I think it's pretty straightforward or, or cool in their abilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the extra powerful ones, you have to give up something. Mm, yes. And that ended up costing me without even realizing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The first game. Where the, the ability to get any more ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. But it still came so, out pretty well. Um, so the expansion, Thing Valir. I'm very curious. Um because you were the one who brought it up. Uh, you're like, oh, there's an expansion. And, I, and it's been sitting on my shelf forever. Uh, would you go out and get the expansion? Absolutely not. Really? No. You, don't, you don't like the expansion? <laughs> it, it, it adds way too much to the game. Um, so, <laughs> Absolutely it, not. In, in my beat mind... beat up the designers, actually. That, that's part of the issue, is, is you could play this game with people who are there just to have fun, mm -hmm. or you can play it with people who are going to min-max everything. And yeah. I play with both types of people... And certain games work for both types of people. There's a lot of lightweight games that work for both groups. Mm -hmm. This game, I cannot see working, or at least being enjoyable, because the entire time it's going to be like, oh, you're sitting there, you have AP the entire time. Yeah. There's That just adds, I feel like, too many levels of depth for you to think 40 moves ahead, in my opinion. Okay. Because you can get to the point, even like with the card that I had, um, you can... Start getting to the point where you're you're trying to figure out who's going to go second and who's going to go mm. third, and am I going to win on one, two, or three, and what are they going to get on one, two, and three? And it just it, it it loses that level of lightweight game. There's some randomness in the game, and but that's enjoyable because it's a low, it's it's a short game and low impact overall. Yeah. With adding that, it just for me, it's just it's too much. Sure. And I don't think it's like heavily complex. I think it just. Just adds a lot of it, it, There's it, too it, much going on. It takes because Nidavellir becomes one of those games, and there's a few that are out there where, man, that would be a good top ten. That'd be a hard one to do. But there's games out there where it's no, you're no longer playing the game. You're playing against other people. Mm -hmm. Like chess, for example, yeah. is now I'm playing against you. Yeah. Uh, this is so simple that it's now complex because I'm because we're in the same mindset. Probably Targi. I've never played Targi before. Them. I've heard it's more. Yeah, I understand. There's like three things to do in this entire game, but. It's now very difficult because y you and I are so on on sync. Mm -hmm. I think Nida Valir, the base game, can become that, mm -hmm. where it becomes more about reading people on their cards, what strategies they tend to go for, what heroes they might get. It's not so st strategy heavy, yeah. um, but it could start heading towards that. that. The expansion, you're right, takes that away. You are now no longer able to play the player. And you asked the question about the heroes. I do think there's some cards, especially towards late game, that if you set your cards up in a certain way, they are overpowered. I don't think heavily. Yeah. I, I think I think they are not completely balanced. I think there's some that are fairly weak that come out and maybe that's You're talking about you're talking about the uh, like the the base game heroes? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which ones you think. Cause I think I think the base game heroes are, are pretty balanced. As, yeah. Even with the brothers, I think they're fairly balanced. Because I played a game where I focused on that, the first game that I played. Mm -hmm. And I did okay. Yeah, actually, um, the first you won. You won that game. I got second. Did you get second? Yeah. In the game with me, you, and other Zach? Yeah. Oh, I thought you won. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because, well, yeah, the brothers are interesting because either you go for them early, which now gives everyone the opportunity to... Mm -hmm steal that from you or you can try to go late but then you have less chances of trying to yeah. actually get gain any points from it mm -hmm. uh the ex yeah the expansion definitely lets you ramp like i got one brother and i think in one turn i got two brother like like three total yeah just from the way that oh because you got a card that lets you get another. yeah one. i got a card that let me um yeah actually i know what it was it was i got a brother as a regular that's that's who i picked and then the next turn or a few turns after was the the artifact that let you recruit a hero mm -hmm. and then i recruited the guy who gave me his clones placed his clones that gave me a set that gave me another brother yep. um 
And then we still had enough time left for me to finish another set, which gave me my third brother. But even at, with adding, are they mercenaries? What are They're they? mercenaries and artifacts, yeah. At the beginning of the game, with the base game, you can start planning out, like, okay, somebody's going to get a set, I'm going to get a set at this point in the game. When that comes in, it just it's completely a wash. You have no idea who's going to get a set and when, and it's going to go by the the lead player. And then if you have that, then it's going to change things. It, it just, yeah. It's a little bit too too much for yeah. me. Especially for a game where you're you're randomly betting on tokens that you don't know what people are going to flip over. Like, you, you, can't, you can't... I don't think you're randomly betting on... Well, I, on... you're not random, but you don't know... I, I'm saying you're, you don't know what someone's going to flip over at any given moment. You're trying to guess yeah, those you, things. Yeah, you do have to guess. But when you get to this area of having another level of complexity added on the randomness of getting those cards, mm -hmm. randomness being the, the token values, Yeah, I think that's the point where it pushes it too far. Especially with the mercenaries. And then yeah. that pushing you into a situation where you don't know if you're going to get the majority in something. Because mm -hmm. you have two that could be red, but maybe you want to go for another thing. and it's just Oh, right. Yeah, because of the, the split. The yeah. split mercenary. Where it's like... like in the, in the first game that we played tonight, where it was just the base game, it was like you and I going back and forth on the Warriors. And yeah. it's just kind of, okay, who happens to... And I'm saying that I loaded up on Warriors, and I'm just like, this is not, right. not going to be readable by anyone <laughs> as far as what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good point, because, yeah, it's like, you can try and, uh, in the base game, like, hope that, okay, I can beat him in this bid, and that, and this is the final bid, I beat him there, boom, I have more Warriors, that means in the distinction... I'm going to get the benefit. Or if it's H2, I'm going to get to add my greatest value coin. Right. You're right. The mercenaries, it's just like, well, he has four over there, so he could beat me, but he can or just... Or he could go for a set, or he could go yeah, for something completely you can just, different. Yeah. Uh, so then the mercenaries just completely add a... Yeah, you're right. It's like, well, I have no idea what he's doing. So then it becomes, well, I guess I'll start taking mercenaries. Mm -hmm. I don't want them because... They're blue and red, and I can't make a set with either of those colors. Yeah. But I don't want you to have it, because you also have the artifact that gives you points for each mercenary, so... Right. Because the, the game we played with the expansion, I was thinking, man, Zach's probably going to win just straight from that that yeah. card, because I don't want mercenaries. Yeah. Like, I want these cards, because I, I want to make my sets, and those mercenaries suck for me. Yeah. So, all right, I guess we'll just see how balanced it was. Um, which it ended up being, like, balanced between you two. I think it was, like, four points difference. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, but, hmm, you make a good point. Because I was going to go into this. I like the expansion. Like, I, th I like the artifacts, and I like the uh, mercenaries. But, if you but think I don't of, know if I like it in this game. I think you make a good if point. If you think of all the things they could have done with this game, as far as an expansion, which I... Also, I don't think an expansion was necessary that quickly. The game just came out. Like I feel like it came Nintendo out. Nintendo came out like three years ago. Really? Is it three years I, ago? I, I they no were idea. showing it at Gen Con. I'll, I'll in, look it up. I feel like it was... Yeah, I'll look it up real quick. Um, um, which maybe it was older than that. I don't know. I think it was... I thought it was... Is it 2020, 2020 or 2020? It's 20. Okay, so two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and the expansion came out the same year. Oh, weird. Yeah. It was yes. out of print it was for a while. The oh, boat, this game was, was uh, relatively hard to get, I think, especially the expansion. Yeah. Now it's um, a little bit more available. So maybe that's why it felt like, oh man, it just came out with an expansion? Well, no, it came out with it, apparently. There's so many things they could have done to expand on the game. I would have been fine with more heroes. Like, more heroes or another class? Yeah, or, I mean, there's, there's tons and tons of things they could have done, looking at the past expansions yeah. of other games, but... Brett, what do you think of the expansion? Um, I agree with both of you, uh, in the sense that... Um, well, I'm, I'm actually agreeing with Zach. I, I was coming in being like, this expansion's great, and well, then... Well, I agree with you, then. <laughs> you like the expansion? No, I mean, <laughs> what I think, me personally, no, no, because it adds... <laughs> it, well, that's the agreement, is it adds a layer of complexity, and it adds a, a new set of options, when I'm already right on the edge of overwhelmed trying to, to get... So I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to throw in the base game immediately oh, but yeah, that's me no. personally yeah um but if you enjoy it and then you get a little bit tired of the base and you mm. want that extra layer it's there to be had yeah and that's... in that sense i would say it's essential for people who reach that level and want to move on right and so what they have done as an expansion i think is really great 
whether or not you particularly want it is the question. Sure. <laughs> and, yeah. And and for me, you know, if I reach that level, when I reach that level, I'll go. Yes, I would really like to incorporate all of these changing mm-hmm. elements and things like that. So in that sense, I agree with both of you that no, I don't <laughs> particularly want it, and it isn't. Uh, it isn't necessary. On the other hand. What it adds is a whole different level of thinking. Oh, absolutely. Instead of just creating more of the same. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's a very good point. And you actually hit the nail on the head because they state on the front... Don't play this <laughs> expansion. <laughs> this expansion sucks. Just give us money. <laughs> this expansion can be confusing because behind its very simple rules is hidden a multitude of new strategies. We recommend that you take the time to familiarize yourself with the base game before embarking on the thing Valir Adventure. Starting directly with the expansion added to the base game could spoil the experience. Lack of experience could make your choices difficult and or random, and it would result in a lack of strategy in order to counter what your partners do. Which is very, very true. I actually like the fact that they say that, because most expansions don't, and then yeah. you're blindsided by, what the fuck is going do on? Do they say that on the box or on the back of the box? <laughs> no, you buy it, and then they tell you. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> don't attempt to play this game. <laughs> do Too not. late. Yeah, Sales has been broken. You already bought it. <laughs> yep, we don't accept, accept returns. That's true. Yeah, they, they don't uh, say it on the box. But I think... Which with, is why people watch playthroughs and Exactly. And this is like, like uh, this one right now. So... Yeah, in terms of an expansion, it I I like the fact that you said it doesn't give you more of the same because that's what I was thinking. Oh, add another class. Well, then you're just adding another class, and mm-hmm. um, I would have been fine with more heroes. And they could have done that, but yeah, they really did throw a monkey wrench in the game by adding artifacts and mercenaries. Like, and you have to choose this or this. Yes, or you may not have a choice because it does come down to, and this is probably better in, with more players. Where oh. I really want that artifact, or ooh, I really don't want Zach to have that artifact. Mm-hmm. But shit, if I go there, then that's gonna allow him to get that yep. <laughs> that class, which is gonna allow him to finish a set. I could, I would mm-hmm. almost bet money that, and I could be wrong, but the designers of this game, I feel like, well, they're, I don't want the fourth player to feel left out just getting the last card, so we're gonna put these in. <laughs> so that they have more well, options. But ultimately, that's also true. in my opinion, there's usually one or two things that you want out of each section. I mean, there's consolation prizes, but those are consolation prizes. Yeah. A lot of the time you want the one or two cards that you need to complete a set mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Or you want one of those cards. So if you're in third or fourth place, it's not really going to make much of a difference. That doesn't sting any less. But yeah, that line of thought doesn't really work for for what that's doing overall, especially because the card gets discarded. Right. Um, yeah, it doesn't stay over, but it does become bidding becomes a lot more important. And important, yeah, because because these are so good. Like the artifacts are insanely good, but the ones that are really good are super detrimental. Like, hey, you can't get heroes anymore. <laughs> yeah, but that's twenty four points, which I would argue. I would never grab that because heroes are going to be way more valuable in terms of, like... Until the very I last I mean, this, this is literally 21 points, just these two alone. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that the crown was, oh, yeah, you just can't get heroes anymore. It's like, well, I don't really want that. But if you can get a few heroes on top of that and then grab the artifact before age one ends, mm, okay, yeah, I could probably go age two without getting heroes. Yeah. So it... It, it's an expansion that is definitely not essential. I would never recommend getting this expansion along with the base game. Mm-hmm. Like, I always bring this one up because it's probably the number one expansion is Prelude to, to Terraforming Mars. Yeah. I would never never play that game without it. Yeah. I would never teach that game without it. Here, yeah, Thing of Valir is I'm keeping it. I like it, but no, it's no, I'm not teaching Work you. Work your way up to it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, do you get it? Okay, let's play a few more games. Now, this adds artifacts. And I really think you really have to like the game. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, this at least has to be an 8 on your scale. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I would agree. If you're going to go for the expansion. Uh, I would agree. The mercenaries, yeah, they are another beast in terms of strategy. Because... Um, mm-hmm. well, I like the way that they're handled. I do, too. Um, you have to wait to commit. Yeah. But... You wait until the critical moment to commit to them, mm-hmm. instead of using them immediately. And then, God, I wish I'd done something different. Right. And I also like the fact that how they're organized. You don't place them immediately. You have to wait. And it's like I have the most. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I could go. You know, I'm going to go last because I might want to 
you know, build out. Oh, well, they have... Crap, he has three. Yeah. He could finish... He can actually finish two sets by placing those. Who's he going to grab, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it, uh, it's, it's accurate to say that it does completely flip Nidavellir on its head. Uh, so, that's really... Yeah, that's a, it's a polarizing expansion. One of the few that I've played, and I wasn't expecting that out of a tiny box. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh... It did bring in some interesting things, but it doesn't ruin the game like other Zach and I played the expansion to Tech Hanu, and it made the game worse. Wow. <laughs> like, we, I was like, I... Because like, we played Tech Hanu by itself, and, and he liked it, and then I, I like it. And then we played the expansion, and we're like, this, this expansion sucks! It For me, Thank You Really didn't do that, but I probably wouldn't want to play it all the time. Um... But with that, on a scale of one to ten, what would you what would you guys give Nid of Valir and the expansion? We start with you. Um, I give Nid of Valir seven. Seven. And Thing of Valir six. Six. Yeah. Still slightly Maybe above average. Maybe five point five. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're on that. Still, edge still right now. very slightly above average. Brett, um, I'm gonna go seven both. On both? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't hit me the same way it does you. But I totally get the category of people who would just go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Set collection is a genre of games that, eh, they're always just so blah for me. Yeah. Uh, the only time I ever liked like Five Tribes, I like set collection than that. Um, but that's one fifth of something that's in the rest of that game. Yeah. Uh, this is a set collection game with, and it's not necessarily it's not auction. Is it bidding? I guess it's bidding, right? Silent bidding. Silent bidding, yeah. And even that, it's 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 usually... I think I'm more taken by this game because it's two genres that I'm like, I take or leave it. Mm -hmm. But they work really well for me. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give Nidha Valir... I'm going to give it an 8. Uh, and the expansion... Man, Zach, you did make a good point. You're not wrong, but I think it comes down to the types of games that you and I kind of like. I think... Uh, but I am going to give the expansion a 7. I do think it muddies the purity of Nida mm -hmm. um, a little bit more than especially what a lot of people are going to expect. Right, yeah. If they're like, ooh, does it make it a little bit more strat- Oh, oh my god. I don't know how to strategize anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, expansion will be a 7. Nida Valir by itself will be an 8. And that's our thoughts on Nida Valir and Thank Valir. Let us know what you think of the game and its expansion in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Uh, hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.